Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk about makeup. Welcome to my monthly 22 in 22 project pan update. If this is your first time watching, I'll be sure to link a playlist in the show notes, but if you'd like to just jump right in, this is a rolling usage-based project. I'm basically using it to get to know every single item in my kit inside and out. At any given time, I am focusing on using 22 products 22 times within two months so that I can rapid fire learn exactly what my preferences are. Because there are so many products in this project at any given time, I thought I would experiment with a new format this month. So this update is going to come in two videos. Today, I'll be talking about all the things that are rolling out. And in tomorrow's video, I'll be talking about all the things rolling in. I just thought that might make it a little bit more digestible. So feel free to let me know your thoughts about this new format and if I should keep doing it this way in the comments. I hit my usage goal on 14 items this month. So that's what I'll be sharing my thoughts on today. As always, I'll include timestamps in case you'd like to skip around. And now I'm just gonna jump right in. As a side note, if you see me looking over here, that's just because where my notes are pinned because my brain is Swiss cheese. So the very first item is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. Um, this is nice, but it's not the concealer of my dreams. Um, it says that it's high coverage and even though it does have pretty decent coverage, it didn't completely cover the very dark circles underneath my eyes. But to be fair, nothing ever really does on its own. That's why I also have to usually use a corrector. And even then, I can still see some of the shadows underneath my eyes. This did uh, layer on itself well, though. I tend to use it in very thin layers. It did build without looking too heavy. And it did a good job of covering the redness around my nose. So even though it's like, you know, not the miracle for my under eyes that I was hoping it might be. It is still very nice and I will enjoy using this in the future. Thing number two is Chanel's Soleil Tendre de Chanel. And I believe this is the old formula because it was amazing. And everybody raves about the old formula and everybody seems to hate the new one. So I'm assuming this is the old one. I have no way of knowing because this was decluttered to me. Um, but if it's the old one, it's so unfortunate because it, the finish of this is actually what really won me over. It's got kind of like a blurring soft focus finish and it's just, it has this very mm, understated radiance too. So it just kind of makes any texture on the cheeks kind of melt away. And although it looks kind of orangey in the pan um, and it looks orangey swatched, for some reason on my skin tone, on my face, I feel like it looks okay. So um, I really liked this and I'm really sad that they don't make this formula anymore. Um, however, if if you're hearing me talk about this and you're like, oh man, but that's exactly what I'm looking for, a soft focus, blurring bronzer, you know, cream bronzer, then I can suggest the Salt New York cream bronzers. I feel like, I mean, they look different in the pan. They feel different when you work with them, but the ultimate effect I feel like is very similar. I also feel like they're blurring. I also feel like they're soft focus. The radiance of those is a little bit more intense. Like there's no shimmer or anything in the formula. Like it's just like a kind of like a radiance that almost looks like a glow from within, but it's not quite as subtle as the radiance in this one. So there are slight differences, but I do feel like they're comparable. Next, we have the Wet n Wild Dual Ended Contour Stick. And I feel kind of meh about this. And mainly that's because of the color, but a little bit because of the formula too. Um, the contour shade is a little bit too red for my skin tone and the highlighting tone is very white. Um, but I mean, like I can make them work. I almost feel like the contour would make a better bronzer for me, but it's not ideal as a contour or a bronzer. So it's one of those things where like, if I had nothing else, I could definitely make this work, but it's not ideal. Um, as for the formula, I feel like the contour end of the stick is like very silicone-y. Um, and so like when I say like put it on the sides of my nose or like here underneath my cheekbone, it's very easy to blend out. And it almost feels like one of those like smoothing primers, like from the texture. But um, because it is kind of that silicone-y consistency and it's so easy to blend, I feel like it doesn't stay put as much as it should. And for me, like a contour really should stay put because like you don't want the shadow to be like moving across your face throughout the day. So um, I'm not like a huge fan of that formula. And um, the highlighting end is actually like, mm, I'd say it's like a stiffer formula um, and it's almost matte, um, which I don't actually mind. I don't mind a matte um, 
like highlight, especially if I'm going to be on stage. Sometimes that's actually really helpful. Um, but it was almost a little bit dry and stiff and kind of hard to use. Neither of them were tragic. It's not like this is like a horrible product. It's just that I have other ones that work better. So I don't know that this one's going to be staying with me. Thing number four is the Physician's Formula Natural Defense Triple Defense Multicolor Stick Sunscreen. Blush. Because they couldn't think of a shorter name. Wow. <laughs> okay. What do I think about this one? Okay. The formula is very easy to blend. Um, and it almost reminded me of the contour shade in this one. Um, but the blush has less slip than the contour did. So I feel like this is more likely to stay in place. I feel like this is a better formula in general. Um, however, like when it comes to cream blushes, I feel like there's some cream blushes, like the Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge cream blush that I have. I feel like that one is almost, it's got like a, it's like a balmy feel, almost like a moisturizer. And when I kind of put that onto my skin, I feel like what happens is I can easily blend out the color wherever I want it. And then like the moisturizing elements of that blush just kind of like set into my skin. And then the color sets wherever I had put it. And like, it's like really solid and it's almost like a stain. Um, this one, it, it like sits on top of the skin. It, it never really fully soaks in and it never fully sets down. However, it's not tacky feeling. Like, so it, it feels dry, but it never really completely sets. Um, and it creates more of like a layer on top of the skin. However, it does sit on the skin nicely. Um, and I think that part of it's the nature of the product because this is a mineral sunscreen that's how they work. They sit on top of the skin. Um, a chemical sunscreen is going to work when it soaks in. A mineral sunscreen works when it sits on top. So that's probably why the formula is the way it is. And I feel like it does work really nicely. Like it's a very nice blush and I enjoyed wearing it. I enjoyed using it. Um, but the staying power isn't quite as impressive as some of the other blushes that I have. Uh, one thing about this blush though that I should definitely warn you about is they say you can use it on the eyes, the cheeks, and the lips. I would never put this anywhere near your lips if you can help it because it reeks of sunscreen. <laughs> like, I don't necessarily mind the smell of sunscreen, but like when I put this on my lips and used it as a lipstick, it tastes like sunscreen and it is so gross. It just made me want to gag. And when you have it on your lips, it's like all you smell is sunscreen. It's like overwhelming. So on the cheeks, it's great. On the eyes, it's fine. But Oh my gosh, on the lips, just no. Next up, we have the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint in the shade Spiked, which I used 22 times. Um, this is this consists of a pen and a powder end. And I have to say, I really liked the pen, didn't like the powder. However, that's not necessarily based on the formula. It's more based on the color. See, I have really, really light brows. It's like it, the second I go out in sunlight, they completely disappear. And so what I like to do with brow pens is I like to actually get like a darker, ashy color so that I can make super thin, fine lines because my brow hairs themselves are so fine. I feel like if I want to really like draw in brow hairs and I want to have them like match my look, then I have to also make the brow hairs very fine. But if I get a brow pen that matches the color of my brows, then it's like too light and then it, it just doesn't show up. So I feel like taking a darker color like this, like this, this is a, a darker ashy color that's like made for people with much darker hair than I have. But I feel like this works really well because I can draw in really fine lines and they get like in the overall look, it all still shows up. However, that means that the associated powder at the other end is just too dark for me. So what I did was I tried using the powder as like a you know, smudgy liner or as an eyeshadow, but I have to say like, it's not ideal for that. First of all, like the smudgy end of this um, product is, is like too thick to do a really fine line. So you can only get like a super thick smoked out um, eyeliner. And because my eyes are so deep set and um, they're hooded, I usually like to have a thinner line, especially towards like the center of my eyelid. So like it didn't really work well for that. And um, it also didn't really work well as an eyeshadow simply because um, the formula of this powder is it's kind of sticky. So like as an eyeshadow, it becomes very patchy. Um, now, 
that, you know, of course, speaks against using it as an eyeshadow, but I actually have a feeling that that like sticky quality for the powder might actually really speak for the product when you use it in the eyebrows. Because like, you know, on the eyelids, we can use eye primers and stuff to make things stick. But on the eyebrows, I have a feeling like a stickier powder might actually be beneficial because it can actually stick to the hairs. Um, however, I can't test that out because this color is just way too dark. So I don't know if that actually works out in practice. One thing I can say about this pen is is that if you can hear, there's a mixer bead in here. And that tells me something. Because um, what I was doing is I was storing this the way I store all of like my liquid liners and pen products. And that's with the um, the brush tip pointing down. And I do that because, you know, then the ink will seep down into the tip and it's, it's ready to go as soon as I want to apply it. I just open it and then start applying. Um, if I store them upright like this, a lot of times like the, the ink will actually kind of seep down. And then I have to like hold it like this for a little bit to get it to like seep back into the tip so I can apply it. Um, this one, I can't I can't store it with the tip down because what happens is product seeps into the tip because the different pigments kind of mm, separate in the container. What happens is this, this pigment ends up turning kind of reddish, which is like not what I'm going for at all when I want to do my brows. I want them to be ashy, not red. So what I've discovered is I have to store it either flat or like this. Um, and then what I do is I, before I use it, I just shake it up really well and then I just kind of like hold it like this and luckily the fluid inside does seep down into the tip really quickly so it's not like I have to wait very long to apply it but it is something that's good to be aware of. Next up is the e.l.f. Wow Brow Brow Gel and I have it in the shade Neutral Brown. This um, has a little bit of color, a little bit of hold, but it's not like super dramatic in either department. Uh, the color is neutral, but leans just slightly ashy, which is perfect for my taste. So color-wise, it's great. I do wish it had a little bit more hold, but I say that about every single bright brow gel that I've ever tried. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I think at the price point, it's great. Um, this is as good as, if not better, than a lot of the higher-end brow gels out there. So, like, this is definitely a great option, and I have enjoyed using it. Okay, this next one is exciting because it surprised me. It's the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette, um, and it's the brown one, so, like, the first one he did, and it looks like this. I'm going to put it down because it's very shiny, and I don't want it to blind you, but... Um, if you watched me roll this in, you know that this was essentially supposed to be this palette's last hurrah because like I had never been able to get it to work for me. But I feel like that's where a project like this really shines because I essentially forced myself to use this palette back to back every single day for essentially like three weeks straight. And by doing that, I kind of forced myself to use it in new ways and I was inspired to just try different things. And... I figured it out. I made it work for me. So I'm really excited. But that's all I'm going to say about that right now because I actually feel like my experience with this palette as a whole kind of warrants like its own review. So I'm going to do a separate video about that. I also managed to hit my usage goal on a second eyeshadow palette this month. So I also used this 22 times and I used every single shadow in this palette and the Patrick Ta palette um, at least twice just to kind of get a feel for it. Um, and if you're wondering how I managed to do that with two palettes um, in such a short amount of time, the answer is it was the challenge. <laughs> um, some days I ended up using like shades from both palettes to complete a look. Some days I did my makeup more than once um, just to kind of like experiment and play with them and get to know them better. Um, I, I feel like this project has become kind of like a hobby with a purpose for me. So I suffered through it. <laughs> As for my thoughts on this palette, it is beautiful. I love the mattes. They're probably my favorite. My second favorite formula is this kind of like very finely milled glittery formula. Um, that's what I have like on my lids today. And I just feel like um, it it gives this beautiful, impactful shine without being too much. Um, so I what I like about this palette too is that like not only can you, you get like vibrant, colorful looks with it, you can also get kind of neutral-ish looks. Like it doesn't always have to be super extreme. And I really enjoy that. This palette has a range. Um, what else did I think about this? Okay, yeah, there was one tricky thing about this palette, but it's not confined to this palette alone. Um, like 
if you have a shade like, let's see, what's this one called? Nebula here. This is a very glittery shade, which means like if I used it, there was going to be glitter fallout. There's probably even glitter fallout on my face right now that I just can't see and I'll see it in editing. Um, but like anytime I use a shade like that, I do tend to like have to be really careful of fallout and I can't always avoid all of it. And I also noticed that even after taking off my makeup with makeup remover and then going in and doing a double cleanse, sometimes there are still glitter particles on my face. However, I feel like that's kind of the nature of the beast with certain formulas. Um, and that's not isolated to this brand. I feel like the Cleona shadows are like that as well. Like anytime you have extreme shine with particles like that, I feel like that's just as part of the game. These three JD Glow liquid liners I put into this project this month as one product because basically I just wanted to make sure that the formula was okay. I have had the experience, unfortunately, with some of the JD Glow liquid liners that they come dried out. Like I get the package and I open the liner on the same day to test it out and it's already dry. So I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case with these. And I'm happy to report that it wasn't the case with any of them. They all work beautifully. This formula is great. I like combining it like with a shiny gel liner. Like if I have like, you know, the Urban Decay 24 hour glide on eye pencil, like one of the glittery ones and like I kind of smudge it out. So it's like really smoked out on the lash line. And then I add like one of these shiny liners over it. It makes it look really wet and really impactful and it really catches the light and I'm a fan. Um, the one thing you do have to be careful with is that you don't use these in thick layers. You can't um, go over a line. You can't make a like a super thick line. Like you can make the line itself like really thick. Like you can make it go high up on the eye, but you can't use it so that the, the layer is thick, if that makes any sense. Like you don't want to cake this on because when it dries down, it will crack and it will fall off. So you have to make sure you use it in a thin layer. However, this um, formula is very opaque, so a thin layer is more than enough. Onward and upward with the Cover Effects Monochromatic Blush Duo, Matte and Shimmer. I have this in the shade Pink Dahlia. And um, I just wanted to put this in this month just to kind of find out more about it. Every time I've ever used it, like even before this project, I was always happy with the looks, but like I just wanted to learn a little bit more about this formula specifically. I mean, it's pretty basic matte on one side, shimmer on the other. You can choose whichever finish you want or mix the two. I happen to like it because um, I do like to have my shimmer placed very specifically on my face. So for me, this is like great because it's the same color, just a different finish. Um, I find that this is best used with a fluffy brush because it is relatively pigmented. Um, however, I did use this as an eyeliner and I have kind of like a a rubber tipped applicator that I use. It's actually from like an art supply store. Um, and that's actually what I used when I use this as a liner and it worked really nicely that way. So i um, very happy with this and uh, very glad I had in the project because it made me realize exactly how much I enjoy strategically placing shine on my face. Ah, here's an oldie but a goodie. It's the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Um, this is actually the second one I have. I know exactly how this works. The reason I have this in the project is just because this is a little bit older and I just wanted to make sure that the formula was still intact. And the answer is, it is. So um, I enjoyed using this the whole month. Um, not only do I enjoy the color and the slightly luminous finish, but... Um, Mm, it smells like vacation. Normally, I don't like fragrance in my makeup, but I do have to say, even though it is so extremely strong in this one, I just, I love it anyway. It just smells of coconuts and sunscreen and beaches, and I guess I'm just biased towards vacation. Can it be? I think we only have three products left. This one is the Dior Air Luminizer in the shade 001, and this is a powder highlight. Uh, using this 22 times in a row taught me two things. Number one, the shade is borderline too dark for me right now, but that means it'll be great in the summer. Um, and the second thing it taught me was that this is actually best applied using my fingers, which I feel like is unusual for face powders. Um, when I applied this with a brush onto the high points of my cheeks, I felt like it looked a little bit dry, but the skin on the high points of my cheeks is also a little bit dry. But I feel like the oils in my fingers are just enough moisture to like make this really work and sink into the skin and glisten nicely. So I'm actually a big fan of this and I've enjoyed it as long as I apply it 
with a finger and not a brush. We have a second Dior product to talk about. Um, this is the Dior Lip Maximizer Hyaluronic Lip Plumper in the shade 001. This is really pretty. Um, it has a subtle minty smell and a slightly cooling effect. And it is a plumping gloss, so it does like plump, but it does it without tingling. It just makes your lips feel cooler. So like this is nothing like the Too Faced lip injections. Like those feel like pain. I can't, I can't do the lip injections, but this I can do because it just feels like my lips are cooling down. Like it's like a, a comfortable kind of menthol-y feel, I guess. So I actually really enjoy this. Um, it does look very like light um, in the tube, but um, this milkiness, I feel like doesn't translate so much on so much on the lips. It's kind of translucent. So I feel like it lightens my lips a little bit or it lightens the lipstick I wear it over just a little bit, but it's not like super extreme. Then again, I'm also not using this in a very thick layer. I tend to use glosses in relatively thin layers just because I don't like them getting goopy. Um, but I feel like this is like really nice when I like just kind of like put it on the center of my lip and then just kind of tap it in. Um, it makes my lips look a little bit like glass and the plumping eff effect is real. Like it's not going to be a miracle worker. It's not going to make your lips like, you know, like super big, like you got, you know, lip injections. But it definitely did plump them up and I really enjoyed using this. Um, I... It, it kind of reminded me of the Buxom um, plumping glosses, not the Buxom plumping lip creams. Those are different. I made the mistake of getting a lip cream once instead of a lip gloss, and they're like two totally different things. I don't like the lip creams. I do like the Buxom lip glosses. This, I feel, is like a subtler version of the Buxom lip glosses. So if you really like the Buxom lip glosses, um, but they're like a little bit too much for you, maybe like this would be better. Um, the color range of the Buxom ones is much broader. And I feel like the effect is a little bit more intense, but, um, and the taste is also more intense. Like I don't like the way the Buxom glosses taste, but I put up with it. Um, this is like the same thing, just like the volume turned down. Holy guacamole, we've made it to the last product. It is a Too Faced lipstick in the shade Nude Beach. The reason I put this in the project was because I was afraid that it might be like a little bit too light and a little bit too cool toned for me. And so I just thought, you know, making myself use it a bunch of times would kind of teach me if, if it was those things. And it is cool toned for my liking and it is light for my skin tone. But um, I feel like pairing this with like a darker lip liner really works well. That's what I'm wearing today. And I also feel like using this in the center of the lip with like a darker lip color also is really nice because um, it just adds a little bit more dimension to my lips. Um, and the reason I think I'm going to keep using this so much is because it is a really comfortable formula to wear. So... Anytime a lipstick is comfortable and easy to wear, that's like my jive. So that, my friends, is what I'm rolling out. Tomorrow, I will be sharing what I'm rolling in. So if you're interested and you haven't yet done so, feel free to subscribe. I know I'd love to see you again. Uh, now, I'm going to go and find some products to roll in. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style.